Hello, welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And some puzzles just demand to be instantly uh, recorded on Cracking the Cryptic. This puzzle, I only received it yesterday. It's by Shinya. You can see it's a partial killer Sudoku. There are absolutely no numbers in the grid, so quite an extraordinary construction. You may ask yourself, what's going on? What is the restriction that's applying to these cages? Well, far be it from me to be the best person to answer that question. Let me leave it to somebody else. If you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to 11. Look, right across the board. Oh. 11, oh, 11, and most 11, and now it's got up to 10. Up to 10. Exactly. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? It's not 10. Uh, I'm so sorry if uh, for those of you who probably aren't familiar with uh, This Is Spinal Tap, but it, obviously those of you that are familiar will instantly understand the reference here. These killer cages, therefore, can go up to a maximum of 11. <laughs> um, and, yeah, uh, what a tribute, I think, to one of the great movies. Um, if you haven't seen it, you really should. It really is something uh, quite, quite extraordinary. So... What are the other rules? Uh, well, there are very few other rules. It's normal killer Sudoku, apart from all these cages can go up to a maximum of 11. So in normal killer Sudoku, that means that we can't repeat a digit in a cage. Um, and yeah, that apart from that, that's all we have to do. So do have a go at this yourselves. I imagine this will be absolutely epic. Um, I've not had it tested. As I say, I literally received the email and I'm such a fan of the film. I just have to record the, record the Sudoku. Um, so um, yeah, with that, what should I say? Uh, let's break like the wind. Um, let's smell the glove and let's get cracking. Um, how do we start a puzzle with such little information in it? Uh, perhaps... Well, there are some four cell cages, look. So if these can't add up to more than 11, they either have to add up to 10 or 11. So they're, they're either going to be 1, 2, 3, and 4, or 1, 2, 3, and 5. And that's going to be the same for all of them. So have we got, there's another one over there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One here. 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Um, now, what should we do with... Ah, okay. Okay, so I'm seeing some things here that might be interesting. For example, in box 6, we've got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 quintuple. In box 7, we've got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 quintuple. And I'm just wondering whether, actually, what I might have been better doing is not... Um, not giving all of the digits here, but highlighting them in a... If we highlight these in orange, I'm going to highlight in orange digits that have to be five or lower. Because look, I can now just start to use parity in the sense of... I now know all of those squares are high squares. Yeah, yeah, look, we can, we can continue this theme. Look at, at column one, there's a domino here. Well, one of these numbers has to be a one, two, three, four, and five because I can't put two sixes in the domino. So one of these cells will be the fifth low number in this column, which means we can blue in all of the other numbers. Similarly here, I can't make both of those squares high, six or higher because this three cell region will add up to more than 11. Um, so we can immediately give some more blues there as well. Um, what else? Can, ah, oh yeah, look. If this square is blue, these two squares can't must be uh, orange, because we can't have two, we can never have two blue squares in the same region, which means the rest of row eight must turn blue. Uh, this is blue. Oh yeah, yeah. Look, this is blue. So this must be orange, and that completes our quintuple of orange in row six. So all of those turn blue. Therefore, these are part of the same cages. They must turn orange. That gives us five oranges in row seven now. So all of these turn blue. That gives us four blues in box nine. So all of these turn orange. This is lovely, isn't it? It's just 
yeah now we can do more work on box eight now these this domino can't have two blues in it because that will break this three cell region so that must be a blue square this must be I need to find a way I'll what should I do that I'll do that with purple so purple will mean one is high one is low uh, yeah okay so this domino must include one low number because they can't both be high so that square becomes high this square becomes low Okay. Ah, now look, uh, column seven, I've got five oranges, so those all turn blue. I've got four, four blues in column nine, so those all turn orange. I think Spinal Tap would approve of this puzzle. This is very nice indeed. Um, now, what do we do next? Lucy... Box two, we know very little about. It's just got one three cell region in it. Um, bother, I'm a bit stuck here. Uh, three. Ah, sorry, look at that, row five. We've got four blues in, so those must all turn orange. That gives me five oranges in box four. That turns blue. This is a domino now. I've got, I've got four, yeah, I've got four blues in column three. Those all turn orange. This becomes another domino. And... Uh, okay now I now I'm stuck again what is the next do I have to try and do Sudoku that doesn't seem very appetizing given we've got very little restriction you know knowing a digit can be one two three four or five is not a massive bonus is it um Although, having said that, in box seven, yeah, ah, let's look at box seven, because there is a little restriction here. We know that each of these four cell regions must contain the digits one, two, and three, somewhere along them. Now, look, look at these two squares. If these two squares contain two of those three small digits, like a one and a two, or a one and a three, or a two and a three, that will break this this box. Let me just uh, let's do an example. If that's a three and that's a one, I know this this cage has to have a one, two, and a three in it. So I'd have to put a one and a three now in this cell, which I can't do. So actually, one of these two squares must be a four or a five, and one of these squares must be a low digit i.e. 1, 2, and 3, which will have to be repeated there. So this square is not a 4 or a 5. Ah, and as one of these two squares is a 4 or a 5, these two squares can't include 4 and a 5, which gives us a 1, 2, 3 triple in box 4, which means those two squares are 4 and 5. These two squares are 1, 2, 3 squares are 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, this square has to be a 4 or a 5. Ah, now look, we've got two dominoes here that have a 4 or a 5 in them. So we can't put a terribly high number in these two blue squares. In fact, they've got to be 6 and 7, because they can't be higher than that. If we put 8, 8 plus 4 is 12, which is most certainly bigger than 11. And there can't be a number bigger than 11. The, these two squares must be 8 and 9 to complete the column. We can't put a 9 in a 3 cell region because what on earth would we put in those two squares to keep this region under an, under 12? We can't put anything. So this is, this is an 8 and we get a digit after 10 minutes. 8, 9, this must be a 1, 2 pair. Those squares must be 3, 4 and 5. 
or picked from the digits 3, 4 and 5. These can't be 1, 2, this can't be 1, 2. Uh, 6, 7. Ah, this is a domino with a 4, 5 in the top, so this has to be a 6 or a 7. That gives us another 8, 9 pair, look. 6, 7 here, so 1... Oh, it's so close. This must be a 6 or a 7. Nine in box eight, look. Where does nine go in box eight? It's got to go in that domino. And nine in box five. Nine in box five now can't go here, but it can't go on top of a three, four, or a five, because we'll all we'll get to twelve at least. So the nine can't go in those three squares, so the nine goes in the domino. Or in the in the purple domino, which means this is an eight. That's eight. That's nine. There's an 8 in one of these two squares by Sudoku. And there is a 9 here by Sudoku because I can't put a 9 in a 3-cell region. That is gorgeous. So, oh, I can't put a 9 in a 3-cell region. So that can't be a 9 either. This has to be a 9. Sorry, I should have spotted that before. Now, if that's a 9, it's therefore blue, which means this is orange. Now, where does 9 go in box 2? This 9 and this 9 pinch those squares, and I can't put 9 in a 3-cell region, so that's a 9. I can't put a 9 in a 3-cell region, so that's a 9. 9 goes here, because we need to put it in the blue. Oh, not quite. I thought we were going to get all the 9s, but we can actually have put it a 9 in one of those two squares. But we've done brilliantly with the 9s now. Now, what do we do next? Two, three, four, five. If these are three, four, and five, these so these squares are six, seven, and eight. These squares are six, seven, and eight. These squares are six, seven, and eight. Um. Two, three. Oh, now I'm really stuck. What am I meant to be spotting here? Ah, let's look at box one. We have a one, two, three triple. And this domino, which must contain a low digit, so it must contain a four or a five. But it also must contain a high digit, i.e. a digit higher than a six or a six. A six or higher. So if I put the minimum high digit in, that would be a six. If I put the minimum of the four and five in, that would be a four. If that's a four and a six, which is a very minimum they could be, I would have to put a one in here to keep this box below 11 or both below 12. So this, in fact, that's forced. This has to be a four six. This, That must be a 5, therefore. The 5 is on top of a 6, because it can't be on top of a 7. That gives me a 7. That must be on top of a 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 here gives a 7, 9 pair in this box. This must be a 6 or an 8. Ah, that's interesting as well. Look, if... If this is a 6, I'd have to put an 8 into this domino. But that would make that triple have to be 1, 2, and 8. And it can't be, because I can't put a 1 or a 2 in either of those two squares. So the 8 must go there. This must contain a 6. And if it contains a 6, it can't contain a 5. So there must be a 5 up here. Um, it's a shame because if I could rule out one from that square that would be really helpful but I can't seven nine here means this isn't a seven which means there's a seven in one of those squares this can't be an eight 
So if this was an eight, this would have to be a three. Uh, I feel like I'm close to understanding this. This is a seven, eight pair at the top. Six. So they, if there's a six in this triple, there can't be a five in the triple. So this can't be a five. Oh, no, I've got something better. Let's look at row six of the grid. These two squares can't include a four or a five. In fact, those squares can't include a five because there's a five here. But that means that one of these two squares has to be a four, which fixes that this region is a one, two, three, four region with the four at the top. So this square can't be a four or a five. That has to be a three. This square can't be a 3, 4 or a 5. This is a 1 or a 2. No 3s live over there now. 4, 5. Oh, oh this is massive. Um, this can't have a 3 in it. Let me. I'm seeing all sorts of things here. Sorry about this. But let me just try and... If there's a 4 in here, there's a 5 in this region, which means this region is 1, 2, 3... Five, which means this square is a four by Sudoku. I've got to put a four in the row. This is not a four now. Um, there's a five in here, so this is not a five. Now, the other thing I was thinking about was this four five pair, because that means in this box, this is the high digit, which means this can't be a four or a five. And in this box, this is the high, this box, this is the high digit, which means we can do that. The five at the top disambiguates it. That's a four, that's a five. Now that's probably been sitting there for ages. Maybe not exactly in these two positions, but I think that's, I've not really advanced the solve at all there. Apologies. Um, so 5 must be in one of those two squares by Sudoku because again we can't put it in the cage with the 6 oh this felt so powerful and it's just petered out what is it I'm not spotting probably lots of things um Ah, there's something. There's a one, two, three triple now here. So these, oh, that's huge. That means this square must be a five. This must be a four. This square's a six. That square's a seven because we've got to keep these squares to 11 or less. This is an eight now. That means, oh, those two squares have got to be a seven, eight pair now because of Sudoku. Look, these sevens and eights interacting. That gives us a seven, eight pair in row one of the grid. Um, four, five. So ah, and interestingly, look, where does the three go? This this now is a three six pair, which means this square can't be higher than a two. That's a one or a two. This square can't be a three because there's a three in one of those squares. This is a one two pair, which fixes that this is a four. This has got to be a five by Sudoku because it can't be one, two, three, and four. Good grief. Three must live in one of those two squares because of box six, which means this is not a three. Oh, it's so clear. It's so close, I think, to cracking now, but it's still not cracking. These, oh. Eight must be in one of those two positions. Let's highlight that. Six must be in one of these two positions. Ah, there's, yes, there's something. We have a one, two pair, well, and a three in row nine. These two squares have got to be four and five. Why do I think that matters? Well, it matters for that square. That square can no longer be a 9. The 9 shifts upwards. And therefore we get the 8 as well. These two squares have got to be 6 and 7. The 
8 can't go here. The 9 fixes the 9 and the 7. Uh, the 7 doesn't, that does nothing for us. Oh, I'm so sorry. This, I feel like, I keep feeling like I'm on the cusp of a flurry of digits. But I'm not quite understanding. There must be a three in one of those squares, so that's not a three. There must be a three in one of these. Ah, oh, no, that's no use. Um... Okay, so I have hit, hit a real impasse now. We need to turn things up to 11, I think. We've got to push ourselves over the cliff. Um, actually, my favourite quote in the whole of the uh, Spinal Tap film is one, something I can't actually say on Cracking the Cryptic because, um, yeah, it's probably unsuitable. But it's the one after he, uh, he plays the piano. He plays this beautiful piano piece. And then the guy who's sitting him sitting watching says, "That's a beautiful piano piano piece. What do you call it?" And he tells him. Um, <laughs> again, some of you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, ah, bobbins. Uh, this six fixes the six and the three. Maybe that helps me. Six and the three there. That forces those two squares to be a three five pair. Plonks are one and a two in the middle of the grid. It's not it's not good enough, is it? I mean it's nice to know, but it's not good enough. Maybe it's this square. So this has to be a seven or an eight. Yeah, let's in fact highlight all of those in blue and think about what it means for those two squares. They must both be orange, and in fact, ah, they must include a one, because if this is a seven, the minimum I could make, or the maximum I could make these two squares add up to would be four, so they'd have to be one and three. If there's a one in one of them, that one must, oh my God, what did I press there? That is not what I wanted to press. Please don't have got rid of, oh goodness. Yeah, I think I pressed F1, which don't ever press F1 when you're solving a Sudoku. That is not going to help you. Um, so this is a 1. This square must be a 2 or a 3. The 1 fixes that this is a 2 look. That gives us a 1, 3 pair. So this is a 2. This is a 2. Is this going to keep going? Um, no. That's a three. If that's a three, this can't be an eight. That's got to be a seven. That gives us an eight there. Fixes the seven and the eight over on that side. Look, this can no longer be an eight. That can't be a seven. The three now does fix the five and the three. And the two fixes the one. Ah, oh, that gets us down into this part of the grid. The two is part of this cage, of course, so that fixes the one and the two. That fixes a one, one, three, three, two. That all gets done in a flurry. And we must be about to crack the puzzle. Yeah, look, we're going to be able to label that square and that square, which completes the high digits for column six. So this square's got to be a four because it must be the last available orange digit. That fixes those squares as two, five, and six. That fixes, this can't be five, this, ah, don't know. In fact, we don't know the parity of those three yet. We, oh, okay, so we're still stuck. So let's have a look. Yeah, we're still stuck. Let's have a look at row one. We need two, four, five, and so that can't be a two. That's got to be four, five, or six. This square, two, four, five, or six. Two, four, five, or six. Ah, ooh. In fact, this square looks like it's the key square because that square look can't be a one or a two. Now, if this square can't be a one or a two, this square can't be anything apart from a 2 because even if this square is 4 this square would have to be 5 
4 and 5 is 9. I can't make this square a 1 or a 2, which I would need to to keep this box to 11 or less. This square is a 2. That doesn't, that doesn't do anything. I don't... Oh, goodness me. So if this is a four, this has to be, this has to be orange. That's what we can say. This is an orange square. That's the fourth orange. So this has got to be one, three, four, or five. It can't be one because of the one here. So if this uh, goodness, I should. I'm sure I should be able to just write this, finish this off, but I'm not seeing how to do it. So what, one, two, three, six, this is one, three, six, or seven. Uh, let me think about that. Okay, yeah, there's something to think about. Where does eight go in this box then? Eight can only go there, by, it's the only available place. Now, if this was seven, I can't keep this low enough because I can't put one and three into these positions. So this can't be seven either. So where does seven go in this box? Seven goes here. So this has to be six. That gives me a seven there, gives me an eight there. That fixes the six, the seven, the four, and the five. This four is useful at last. So the four goes up there. This can't be a five. If this is a five, that's a six. And that cage is broken. So this this is a three. The three fixes the three and the one. That gives us a six here. That gives us a two. A three and a two. Um, this has to be a five. That means that's a five. That's a six. This is a six. This is a four. This is a 1 by Sudoku. This should be a 4 if I haven't made a mistake. And I will, of course, colour the grid in. I know I should do that. So let's do that. We can place that, that, that's that. And we can make those orange. This one is blue. This one is orange. That one is blue. Ah, why is that not working? There we go. And that is the finished puzzle, I think. Yes. What a lovely puzzle and what a fitting tribute. Um, uh, Shinya, I loved it. And for a lot of you out there, I know you will you will applaud the theme and understand why I'm, I immediately had to solve it on the channel. So I hope many of you enjoyed that. Let us know in the comments. Um, these themed puzzles, I mean, it's rare to get the opportunity to incorporate something, that yet alone to do it with such uh, aplomb and panache, which is what Shinya's done here. So we did take things up to 11 and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.